Hello and welcome, or welcome back to the Three Strands Pod. What's going on with you guys? What's going on? How you feel? How you feel? How you feel? 25 sitting on 25 mil. Listen, I think I'm going to say that every week because I don't know about y'all, but uh, that's what I'm declaring. Thank you, Jesus. It's done already. How are you guys feeling? What's the weather saying where you man are? Is it sunny? Is it rainy? Is it windy? Is it snowy? Because really and truly, in this UK, yeah, you can have all of those different weather types in one day. <sighs> flipping crazy. In April, we were wearing flipping puffer jackets. How are man wearing puffer jackets in April? What kind of setup is this? Talk about shag. Talk about shag. But on a better note, I have some suggestions. Now, all the hip hop slash rap heads, put your hands up. Let me see where you're at. And I see, I see you. I see, I see you over there. I see you. I never knew you like hip hop. I see you. I see you. <laughs> okay, I have some suggestions. Now, these are all London based artists. So if you are in London and you don't already know these people, make sure you check them out. Or if you are an international listener, because you know we got those over here on this side. <laughs> we got those. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just excited. Make sure you support the London artists because um, we holding weight over here. We holding some real weight. I have just a few artists to put you guys onto. So make sure you get your Apple Music or Spotify or whatever music streaming platform you use ready now. First artist we have big and up West London is Bawo, B-A-W-O, with Brasileiro. If you guys really want that summer vibe, then this artist who is representing Croydon is for you. This is Glide by Jords. For you man looking for that 90s hip hop summer vibe, I have got the song for you, Kalada Without You. This is an absolute banger. And last but definitely not least, actually, this one is a little bit of a cheat artist because he's not actually from London, but Birmingham. But we back it anyway. Black Brits for the win. We have Kofi Stone. Now, I actually only recently found him. But instead of giving you just one song, I'm going to put you guys onto his album, Nobody Cares Till Everybody Does. Again, this is for the hip hop slash rap heads. If you guys aren't already hip hop rap heads, get with it. Gee weedy, gee weedy, gee weedy. Next time I'll have some new music, but in April I came with the jazz, now we're coming with the hip hop rap. Next month we'll see what we're saying, okay? You're welcome. And just like that, the time has come to make a do. What a do. So without further ado. Oh, oh, oh. I so said without further ado. Oh, oh, oh. Cue the intro. This episode comes with a trigger warning as I do mention suicide. Judging by the title, you guys may or may not know what it is I want to get into. The glamorizing of the African struggle. Now this topic came to me after seeing a tweet from a journalist named Charles Onyango Obo, who tweeted a picture of an African mother in a body of water reaching up to her chest, with a young child in a basin sitting on her head. Now the tweet reads, Nyalong Wow carries her two-year-old daughter, Naimao Tuok, to dry land during the floods in Zhonglai province, South Sudan. What a photo. Camera emoji, Peter Catton slash action against hunger. Of course, I will leave the link to this tweet in the description below, so make sure you look at it so that you get reference to what it is I am talking about. Now, this tweet drew a lot of attention and one Twitter user concluded that this photo was solely for a photo shoot as the water in the image is completely still and the ripples in the water did not pass the line on her dress. There is also a link in the description to an article by The Guardian that also includes other images of Sudanese people posing in bodies of water. There is one particularly of an elderly woman whose whole bottom half is hidden by the water, while a mother, a teenager and five young children stand in the background, also posing. The problem that I have with photos of this nature is that it just glamorises the suffering of people, and it always seems to be Africans in different parts of the continent. This is the kind of image that we always see. And it's so glamorised, it's like it's photography gold that people just search for these tragic stories and tragic opportunities to go and capture the best looking picture of people suffering. 
it's like the rawer and more heart gripping the picture is, the better the response from the audience. Like completely dismissing the fact that you've just captured someone's difficult reality on camera. It's like, this is gonna be the best picture ever. There is a flood in South Sudan. And now this woman is standing in the flooding water with a baby on her head and this man has just taken a picture. One Twitter user tweeted, seeing beauty slash art in human suffering is sadistic. Where's the compassion to help or to humanise the people in the picture so that the viewers are moved to help or change the situation, not see beauty? These are real people with families, feelings, dreams, etc. Not a fairy tale. And this is what I'm saying about how people like to glamorise the African struggle for everybody else. Not the people that are actually facing these hardships, not the people that are actually enduring this flood or whatever kind of devastation it may be in whatever part of Africa they're in. It's like everybody else gets to see the glitz and the glamour and make this look as beautiful and as aesthetically pleasing as they can for this perfect photo opportunity. It's like people really want to glamorise the struggle and the hardship of life that really and truly they shouldn't even be facing in 2021, but that's a different conversation, we'll get into it another day. But it's like people love to see this struggling mother, these struggling children in different parts of Africa. It's like, oh my gosh, they're dirty, I love it. Oh, what, there was just a flood? Oh my gosh, yeah, let's take some pictures. But like, this is someone's life. For you, it literally is just the perfect photo opportunity for you to capture this reality that you'll probably never have to face and these situations that you could probably never relate to. It's literally nothing more than a photo shoot for you. Another user tweeted, imagine wading through flood water after probably losing everything with your baby in a basin on your head and the photographer says, yep, yeah, stop, look this way, just like that, perfect. And this is not even the first time that we've seen this. We've seen bare pictures. You can literally go on the internet and see bare pictures of photographers having gone to whatever African country or whatever um, impoverished country and taken pictures of people that are struggling. Some of them like super malnourished. And, and it's just like, why would you do this? It's like they love to glamorise this struggle. They love to make it as picture perfect as they can. And what I don't like is that the photographers are exploiting the hell out of these people. One Twitter user said, we also need to stop referring to our motherland and other countries as developing or underdeveloped and start saying what it is, overexploited countries. Like I already said, that no, we don't have to get into it. This shouldn't even be anyone's reality in 2021. There's so much that could have been done that hasn't been done due to greed and the glamorising of the African struggle and different struggles and poverty in general, but we don't have to get into it. But these countries are so over-exploited, so over-exploited that people are literally going there to go and take pictures and be like, this is a great, I'm poor and helpless, look at me aesthetic. We already know that Africa as a whole has been exploited in a million, billion, zillion different ways. And that is how it has led to it being the state that it's in. And people are still going there to exploit the people that live there, still exploit the hell out of their lives, their livelihood, their realities, their situations, their struggles. Just go there and take whatever you can. That's what people are still doing to this day, in this big 2021. Like when I see pictures like this, it's it's so crazy to me because I just think these people were either going about their business and told to stand still while this random man takes pictures of them or they were told to leave whatever they were doing to go and stand in dirty water and pose for a picture by a random man. Like I said, this woman is in South Sudan post-flood. Like, the water that she's standing in is deep, yo, it's deep. So how did they get her to go and stand in this water? Like, they're just taking the piss. Because either she was not in the water and was on the land, dry, trying to look through her stuff or try and make something of whatever is left post-flood, or she was in the water because, again, there was a flood and you've exploited this harsh reality for her as a photo opportunity for yourself. This is the glamorising of the African struggle that I'm flipping tired of seeing. 
is that people never want to capture moments that aren't people struggling in floods or people malnourished or people just looking so destitute. It's like this is the only Africa that people have in their minds. And people are so happy to keep perpetuating the stereotype that this is all Africa is and ever will be. Whatever one of those realities that photo shoot was, either she was going about her business and told to get in the water or was already in the water, it's just exploitative and intrusive and it just dehumanises her and everybody else that's there because these people, are, their struggles are just being used for props for a photo shoot that they're probably never going to see because I doubt that people went back to be like, hey, look, we wrote this article about you guys. Thanks for posing for these pictures. You did great. They probably just took the pictures and asked out and never heard from them again. I doubt they kept emailing, I doubt their pen pals. Like people are so obsessed with this, this narrative of the African struggle, this narrative of the way of life in Africa. Like water aid, this one is flipping crazy. Water aid, yeah, they love to go to like these random African countries and film small children like drinking dirty water. And then they'll make an advert about it, then ask us to donate one pound, two pounds, 10 pounds, 50 pounds to help them provide them with clean water. Why do they do that? Why do you have to go there and tell us Michael has to drink this dirty water that's probably going to make him sick? Okay, but why are you making him drink it for the camera? Okay, let's pull it back. Even if Michael isn't drinking this water, why did you make him get in the dirty water? Why did you give him a cup and tell him to scoop the dirty water and either drink it or put it very close to your mouth so we can show the people in the West this is what your life is like? Get him out of the water and do something about it. Like, they love, they, oh my gosh, they love it. They really, they they really love to see people at their worst, at their lowest. It's like they can't just film this young boy, Michael, aged four, and then show us the dirty water that Michael has to walk millions and millions of miles to that isn't even clean. You can just show us Michael, then show us the water. He doesn't need to sit in it, he doesn't need to drink it, doesn't need to play with it or whatever. Just tell us. Don't even tell us. Just show us. We can see it. The water's brown. He shouldn't drink it, he shouldn't be near it, and neither should you. Just, just zoom in, show us, and zoom out. That's fine. It's like they love to be like, this is somebody's reality. This stinks and it's dirty and oh gosh, donate now. But only one pound because, <laughs> yeah, we don't want to do too much because we need them to look like this so that we can feel good when we help them. But not too good because we don't want their life to be good. Just, just all right-ish, kind of, maybe. And I always just think, why are water aid constantly going to these flipping countries to go make these children sit in this dirty water? Or there's always that fly that's in someone's eye or in someone's nose. Like, I remember when Trevor Noah was like, the BBC trained flies. Because they always be having flies. They have flies and they have the kids in the dirty water. Or they'll make them go and pose in the water. Oh my gosh. Why do they always do this? Why you can't just say... My man ain't got food, my man ain't got light, my man ain't got water. I beg you man, send a pound or two, help him get his thing straight. Then we send a pound. Just give it to me straight. Don't go there and force them to be doing this, that and that. But we already know he has to do this all the time. Now you're being super intrusive because you're now sticking a flipping camera in his face and making him do all of this just to like make us feel some type of way. I don't want to see that. Just tell me, just tell me that Michael's life is hard or Sarah's life in, in the Congo is hard. Michael's life in the Uganda is hard. Okay, that's fine. Don't go and be adding to the stress of these people's lives because now you've gone there, stuck a camera in their face and come back. Are you going to go back and do something? Where's my one pound going? Where's my two pound going? How many times a year do you go to Uganda or Congo or this country or that country and go and stick cameras in people's faces and make them do all of these things that they probably don't want to keep doing? How are you helping? It's like these photographers and journalists and these people keep trying to bring awareness and shed light. You've been shedding this light since 1995. All now there's no light. From 1997, you haven't brought awareness. All now. 2021 and we're still being made aware. Where's my two pound been going? No, no, where has it been going? Because you've been bringing this awareness to me and you've been shedding this light, but it's still dark and there's no awareness. So what have you been doing? What is the purpose of you going to these countries? Where's all the money that people have been donating over all these years? Where's it going? How are you still bringing awareness and still making these people sit in this dirty water and making them play with these malnourished animals? What's the purpose of that? Other than to glamorise this struggle that these people are facing. You're not helping. No, but deeper, you're actually not helping. I'm not saying that no charity has made a difference. I'm not saying that nobody has been helped through the work that charities are doing. I'm just saying that there is a different narrative that needs to be pushed. 
there's a different story that we need to be telling. It's not actually every day make children sit in dirty water and make people carry their babies on their heads and pose with pictures in flood water. It's actually not every day. Because if there has been change and things have improved, show me that. It's not every day you continue to be perpetuating the stereotype and be pushing this narrative that Africa's absolutely done out and everybody there drinks dirty mud brown water and it's always flooding and they live in mud huts and they got no light, no electricity, no food, the animals be malnourished, all of that. There's definitely another narrative. So why are you not pushing the work that you have done? Unless you haven't been doing work, so then what have you been doing? Why have you been going there all these years? It, it genuinely makes no sense to me. But then again, what do I know? I'm just an African. Another Twitter user shared... This photo opens so many questions about photo ethics on consent, the Western gaze, compensation, beautifying suffering, narratives, how the image will be used, who benefits, etc. This is what I was saying, that these photographers, these media um, outlets and whatever, they all just go in there to go and exploit the hell out of these people in these suffering and struggling situations. And I'm just tired of it. It has to flip and stop. Because there's people, there's really people struggling in the West but they don't be showing them that, they be showing Africa. The way that they'll, be, they'll paint the whole of Africa to be one big dirt road, like there's no streets, no light, nothing. Like you never hear anything good said about different countries in Africa. It's like they always want to talk about Africa when there's a problem. Oh yeah, it came from Africa. The whole, the entire continent, it just came from there, yes. There's really homeless people here, people without water here, people without light here. There's problems, you know. This West will make you believe that this is the place to be. It's really not. This place is not as nice as it seems. These media outlets, journalists, all of them, they are the only people that are profiting from going to these different African countries and capturing the lives of these people. Because, like I said, I, they're not really even showing us what what good is being done from the pictures that they're taking. These adverts that they're making or whatever, they're constantly showing us people that haven't got light, people that haven't got food. They are the only ones benefiting because they are getting money from these photos or money to go make these adverts and whatever. But what is actually happening for the people that live there, the people who you have captured on film, how are they benefiting from this? Are they benefiting? Do they get compensation? Are they being paid in any way? What happens to them? After you take the picture, do you just say, okay, thank you, see you later, cheers, and then you're off. And then they never ever hear from you again. They don't see the pictures. They don't get any money from whatever it is that you make off the back of it. What happens? All of this, the tweet and people's responses and how it makes me feel, it reminds me of the famous The Struggling Girl photo taken by Kevin Carter. Let me give you a little background on the photo if you are not familiar. So in 1993, Carter flew to Sudan to photograph the famine and he came across a toddler who was making her way to a feeding centre. So he took a photo of the child and then a vulture landed nearby. Now, apparently Carter had been told not to touch the victims due to disease, so he waited 20 minutes for the vulture to leave, but it didn't. So eventually Carter scared the vulture away and the toddler went on her way. After the New York Times ran the picture, readers were eager to find out what actually happened to the child and questioned when should photographers intervene, and Carter was actually criticised for not coming to his subject's aid. Although the girl did survive, she died 14 years later from malarial fever. Carter actually won a Pulitzer Prize for his photo, but took his own life in July 1994, the following year, after saying he was, quote, haunted by the vivid memories. I think this is a one in a million situation where you actually see a child so small and malnourished on the ground that if you guys haven't seen the picture, I shall leave the link in the description, so make sure you check it out. But this child, she looks so small, and you can see the vulture so clearly behind her. This is a crazy situation. And for Kevin Carter, this was nothing more than a photo opportunity. Like he said, he went to Sudan to go and capture pictures of the famine. He didn't go there to go and help people. And he was even told that he shouldn't even touch them. So how much help can you even provide when you can't even touch the people that you're even there to see? All of this for people in the West, people that are not natives to these countries, this is nothing more than a photo opportunity. Like I said before, for them, it just, it seems like it's nothing more than, it's like the best photo shoot that you could ever participate in. Like real people, real struggles, but you don't have to do anything but stand there, take photos and leave. Like you don't help, don't 
don't intervene, nothing. Just if there's a lion about to eat them, just capture the moment and then just run away. That's literally what it feels like. That these people's lives are just, they're not taken seriously. They're seen as nothing more than just props for a photo shoot. And it's not just a photo shoot where it's like, oh, we're advertising this new lip gloss or there's this new hair dye or there's this new shirt that we're making. People's lives, their entire livelihood is at stake. Like there are floods, famines, and people are just traveling across the world to go and take pictures. In this case, Kevin Carter actually won a prize for his photo. And people were asking him, what happened to this girl? And he didn't even have answers. He couldn't be like, oh yeah, so we went to the feeding centre and spoke to people and we were donating money to get her help and whatever and whatever. He was like, hmm, I just took the picture. Like, he he couldn't even answer what had happened to this girl or if she's okay or whatever. Because that's what it, it literally is. For them, it's not like these are people's lives. It's not like people are actually hurting, people are actually in need. It is nothing more than a trip abroad to go and take pictures and then come home and win awards, win prizes, off the back of somebody suffering. Now, in this case, it is unfortunate that Kevin Carter took his own life. He took his life after feeling bad because he didn't do anything to help the life of the toddler that he saw, that he was face to face with, that he could have helped and decided not to. I don't know if he decided not to, like I said, because he was told not to touch people, but you don't have to touch them to help them. But again, like, there's no way to know. But I think it's very unfortunate that this is the life that we live now. If you guys want to go abroad and help people that are facing famine, floods, just struggling in whatever way, and you do take your camera, please don't go and do this. We don't need that. Even if you're not taking pictures abroad, as in in an African country, just be aware of the stereotypes or the narratives that you are pushing when you are taking pictures of helpless people, whether they be homeless, struggling, whatever it may be. Just please be aware of how you may be benefiting off the back of that person's struggle. Yeah, and just think twice before you take the picture or after you take the picture and decide to post it or whatever you decide to do. Just think about how you can contribute to the improvement of that person's life because they are a person and not just a subject of a photo shoot or just a photo opportunity. Please be considerate that people are going through a lot, not only because of the pandemic, just because life. As always, the links to everything that I have referenced will be in the description below. So if you guys are interested in seeing the story about Kevin Carter or the image that I referenced right at the beginning of this episode or everything in between, make sure to check the description. And until next time, peace in the Middle East to you and your crew. What, what, peace in the Middle East to you and your crew.